Hello everyone. In this session, we will cover fundamental accounting principles and assumptions that are embedded in generally accepted accounting principle in GAAP. We talked about GAAP in prior recording. Understanding these principles and assumptions is crucial as they will be applied throughout the course and your professional practice down the road. I'm gonna list these principles and assumptions and we will define and discuss each one of them separately using an example. We're gonna be covering the following accounting principle. Cost principle, an important principle. Revenue recognition, another important principle. Expense or matching principle, important. They're all important. The full disclosure principle. And we will cover the following accounting assumptions. Monetary unit assumption, going concern assumption, time period assumption, business entity assumption. And at the end of the recording, we will work a multiple choice question to reinforce these concepts. Stay motivated in this course and let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Starting with the cost principle. The cost principle is important, as I mentioned earlier, because you are going to see it again and again and again. And what's the cost principle? Basically state that transactions are recorded at their actual cost. It's simple, but it's very powerful. Accounting information is based on actual cost. In contrast to fair value, in contrast of your opinion, in contrast of how much you think something is worth. You don't record something based on on much how much you're worth. You look at it and you measure it in terms of cash or its equivalent cash when you make that purchase. For example, if cash is used to purchase a service, the cost is the amount of cash paid. If non-cash items are exchanged, like trading a car for a truck, the cost is determined by the cash value of the item exchange. What did you give up? In this method, make sure that the information is objective. This means what? It's supported by independent, unbiased evidence. How much you paid for something actually is the best measurement of that something. For example, if a company buys equipment for $500, the cost principle principle requires that the equipment should be recorded at $500, regardless of the owner's belief that this equipment is worth $700 or $800 or $900. Your opinion don't matter. What matters is the amount of money or the equivalent amount of money you gave up. And this is an important concept, cost principle. You will see it through your accounting career. Every time you make a purchase, you would record it initially at cost. Remember this, you would record everything at cost. The other principle that's important as well, revenue recognition principle. I cannot emphasize this enough. Revenue is recognized. When we say the word recognize, it means revenue is same thing as recorded. Notice recognize and recorded means the same thing. When goods or services are provided to customer and at the amount expected to be received from that customer. What does that mean? It means you can record your revenue when you provide the goods and the services and you would record this revenue at the amount you expect to receive it for. What does that mean? It means you don't have to wait until the customer actually pays you. As long as you provided the goods or the services, whether you are selling a chair or you're providing a service, you would record this. So revenue is the income earned from selling the product or services. It is typically received in cash, but it can also be a promise to pay in the future known as credit sales. What does that mean? Let's think about, I'll keep it simple. Let's assume uh, you sold a cup of coffee because I have a cup of coffee in front of me now. So let's assume a store sells a cup of coffee. I walk into the store, I pull $2 out of my pocket, I gave them the $2, and they gave me that cup of coffee. Great. What did this company do? This company generated a sale. Great. 
I purchased something, they, they gave me the cup of coffee. Let's assume I walk into that store, I didn't give them anything, they trust me. I gave them a promise, I will pay for that coffee. And they gave me that cup of coffee, they let me walk away with it. That's also a sale for the company, specifically for Wawa. I buy my coffee from Wawa, there you go, free advertisement. So the revenue recognition state, revenue is recognized when goods or services are provided. Well, I, I just made a promise to pay them. Well, promise to pay is as good as if I paid because as long as I'm expected to pay and obviously if they don't trust me, they would not have sold it to me on credit. Let's use a third example. Let's assume I walk into Oahu today. I gave them $2 and I told them, next week i'm coming back to get my coffee so next week i'll get my coffee is this revenue no because wawa did not deliver the goods so you only recognize the revenue when you deliver the goods not when you not if you prepaid or if you pay or uh, that doesn't just because you exchange money you gave them the two dollars if you didn't get the goods they cannot recognize the revenue Recognize revenue means to record it in the financial statement. When do you record this revenue? When the company delivered the goods or the service. Let's take a look at another principle called, called the expense recognition principle or the matching principle. We talked about the expense and we talked about the revenue. Now we need to talk about the expense. A company record an expense in the same period as the revenue they help generate. What does that mean? It means in the period where you generate revenues, for that year, you, you look to see which expenses help generate this revenue. And all the expenses that help generate this revenue will be recorded that period, regardless whether you pay them or not. This means that the cost incurred to earn revenue are reported in the same period as revenue. Now you might pay that cost later, that's fine. Okay. If a company pays its rent for the office space, this cost should be recorded in the same period as the revenue generated from using that space. So when you pay, for example, six months in advance, when do you recognize the expense? You rec recognize the expense as each month goes by because each month is generating the revenue. You have to wait until that rent is generating the revenues. The expense recognition principle, as well as the revenue recognition principle, we're going to see them later when we prepare adjustments. Full disclosure principle, what does that mean? It means the company must report all details behind the financial statement figures that could affect the user decision. So you don't only provide the numbers, you provide footnotes, text, paragraphs, additional details that's going to help the users make a better decision. For example, if a company has a significant pending lawsuit, this information should be disclosed in the footnotes, assuming it meets certain criteria, as it could impact users' decision. So if the company is sued, you want to know about this. Well, it's not in the financial statement. You disclose this in the notes after the financial statements. And these principles ensures that financial statements are accurate, reliable, and useful for decision making. Those are principles. Cost is important, revenue, expense, and full disclosure. Important principles. Now let's discuss a few accounting assumptions. The first one is the going concern assumption. What does that mean? The going concern assumption assumes that a business will continue to operate in the foreseeable future and not be sold or closed. What does that mean? It means when you prepare financial information, when you prepare your figures, accounting information, you assume we're in business practically forever. This means that assets like property are reported at their original cost rather than liquidating value. So if you have a piece, a piece of property, a building, a truck, any asset, we're going to define asset shortly, you know, something, whatever you have, you report that something at its original cost, not how much you can sell it for. Because if you if you report that what you're selling it for, it means you're telling me how much it's worth today. But I don't need it how much it's worth today because you're going to be in business forever. Therefore, we report it at its original cost. Monetary unit assumption. Transaction and events are recorded in a monetary unit. For example, if in the U.S. we use the U.S. dollar. 
In Mexico, we use the Mexican pesos. And this assumption allows for consistency and comparability. Because if you're looking at two Mexican companies, if one in US dollar, the other one is a, Mexi is a Mexican pesos, you cannot compare it. You have to convert, and how you convert, it gets complicated. It's not like you take the figure times a number. Certain figures are old, certain figures are averages, certain figures are fair value. Therefore, keep all the numbers in one currency. Use Usually, it's the home currency, whatever currency you are using. Another assumption that's important we're going to see later on is called the time period assumption. This assumption states that the life of any company can be divided into specific time periods. So you can take the life of the company and divide it into two periods, semi-annually. You can take the life of the company and divide it into one, two, three, four, quarterly. You can take the life of the company and divide it into 12, monthly. You can divide the life of the company into any particular period, but you have to define this period. So financial reports can then be prepared for these distinct period to provide timely information. Now, for example, publicly traded companies, publicly traded companies, they have to report their information on a quarterly basis. Small businesses, mom and pop, they do, they do so yearly. The reason they do so is because they need to prepare their taxes. Uh, certain private companies, they want to see their information twice a year. Certain businesses, they want to see everything what's happening on a monthly basis. So you can take any company and you divide that company's life into specific time period. This is called time period assumption. Another assumption called the business entity assumption. Now, what does that mean? It means the business itself is accounted for separately from the owners or other businesses. So each business is a standalone business, standalone even from the investors, from the owners of that business. This assumption makes sure that the financial records of the business reflect only its activities and not mixed up with the personal finances of the owners or other entities. So each business is doing what? Reported separately from other businesses. Each business is reported separately from its owners. Now, when you have a business, you could have a business as Schedule C, which is sole proprietorship. You could have a corporation. You could have an LLC. You could have an LLP. We'll talk about the different type of businesses, but each business is accounted for separately. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. A software company signs a contract on January 1st to deliver a customized software package by March 31st for 15000 the company delivers the software on March 15th and the client pays the full amount in April. When should the company recognize the revenue? That's the question. Is it when they sign the contract? Is it by the date the software is supposed to be delivered? Is it by March 15th or is it when we got paid? What is the revenue recognition principle state? The revenue recognition principle state, you recognize revenue when you deliver the product. When did you deliver the product? You got it, March 15th. So on March 15th, you delivered the service. You delivered the service, the revenue recognition principle state, recognize the revenue, record the revenue. So on March 15th, according to the revenue recognition principle, you can recognize the revenue. What should you do now? You wanna to go to farhatlectures.com, look at additional MCQs, especially if you're an accounting student, invest in yourself, study hard, look at additional lectures, Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.